I know what you're thinking. The Egg Festival only has 26 collectible eggs. That joke was better written out. I've gone over secrets, tips, and exploits, but I haven't yet talked about the little details and references to other franchises that are hidden all around the game. These all don't really matter much in the grand scheme of things, but they're neat. The first one is right when you open the game, you can ah. click on the Concerned Ape logo and it quacks and knocks the glasses off. You may also see a message in the bottom left. This is based on how many times you've opened the game. There's a couple of special ones for when you open the game 100, 1000, and 10,000 times. The title screen itself has a bunch. Clicking the E a lot makes an alien appear. Clicking this screw on the W makes butterflies appear. Clicking on the lower left swirl and then placing that piece that you picked up into the middle of the R makes a bunch of trees show up. Clicking on the leaves makes a Junimos appear. Ken's wife being named Jody is interesting. Jody is a term for a guy who has an affair with the wife of someone who is deployed. There's an old adage, when the man's away, Jody's come out to play. Your favorite item affects the dialogue you get when you obtain a star drop. If you put in Concerned Ape, it'll say your mind is filled with thoughts of Concerned Ape? Well, thanks. And if your favorite item contains the word Stardew, it'll say you feel an unwavering connection to the valley itself. There's a bunch of things you can put hats on other than yourself. Your horse, your child, the alien rare crow, and sea urchins. This is a reference to how some sea urchins will try to cover themselves with a clam or a rock for protection. Playing the Stardew theme on Elliot's piano gets a heart reaction out of him. There's a whole list of commands you can try to put into the chat box that will give you the message, nice try. Mostly commands related to cheating. The bone flute artifact is actually the oldest discovered instrument in real life. It was made from a vulture bone, and it had five holes in it, just like the sprite in-game. The title Junima Kart is reminiscent of the Mario Kart series, with gameplay similar to the minecart levels in the Donkey Kong Country series. While it's not really an easter egg, you may be wondering what the familiar zigzag pattern on the pour over shirt is supposed to be. It's the edge of a coffee filter. The Wumbus and Bobo characters that you can find all around the game may seem random at first glance, but they're actually characters from Concerned Ape's webcomic Wumbus World. Tailoring a radioactive bar gives you the radioactive goggles. The description says it doesn't actually provide any protection from radiation. This is a reference to the Simpsons episode Radioactive Man. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. The dust sprites from the ice floors in the mines are references to suits from the Ghibli movies My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away. The suit sprites can be seen carrying coal in Spirited Away, and dust sprites can drop coal when killed. The rare crow that's purchased at the Stardew Valley Fair is a reference to Turniped from the film Howl's Moving Castle. And to complete the trilogy of Ghibli movie references, when first meeting Evelyn, she tells you that you can just call her Granny, which is a line that's also said both in Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away. Shane's signature blue chickens are thought to be inspired by Kohiro, or Kojiro, from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Shane himself also shares many traits with the man you deliver Kojiro to. Depressed, loved by animals, and found in the middle of the woods. The Gourmand Frog is a reference to Final Fantasy IX character Kina Quen. They travel around the world to eat different types of frogs. Both characters also speak in broken English. In Abigail's room, you can find a picture of Chrono, the main protagonist of Chrono Trigger. There's also a picture of a SNES controller and an actual SNES in front of the TV. The dolphin could be a reference to Echo, but I'm not 100% sure on that since it's from a Genesis game. Over in Sebastian's room, we can see a picture of Pete, the protagonist of the Story of Seasons series, formerly known as Harvest Moon. And to the left, we can see Earl from Toe Jam and Earl. And in Shane's room, we can find his Sega Genesis. Yes, it also looks like a Nintendo 64, but it's called the Mega Station. And in Japan, the Genesis was called the Mega Drive. The dirt in this wallpaper looks dangerously close to a dirt block from Minecraft. The movie Mysterium that plays in the theater is a reference to the intro for The Twilight Zone, from the black and white color, all this talk about unknown horrors, and an eyeball. The dinosaur egg is similar to a Yoshi egg from the Mario series. Yoshi is also a dinosaur. Or a dragon, depending on which game you look at. When going down on the submarine during the night market, there's a chance that you could see a mermaid swim by. Unfortunately, you can't see the Titanic from here. 
Sebastian is the only character in the game that likes flounder. Many people take this as a reference to The Little Mermaid, which features two characters named Sebastian and Flounder. On the 27th night of any month, there's a chance to see the full moon in the top right corner of the screen. Clicking it a bunch makes it turn around, revealing a face reminiscent of Luna being trapped in the moon in My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And a trip to the moon, I guess. Also on the 27th day of any month, there's a chance for a UFO to fly across the screen. And always on day 24 of winter, you can spot Santa Claus flying across. If you put slime incubators in town and hatch some slimes in them, slimes will just walk around Pelican Town now, and they can say hi to whoever's passing by. On the other hand, if you hatch them in your house, your spouse will react in horror and kill it. They even have special dialogue. A lot of people believe that the sweet gem berry looks an awful lot like the FL Studio logo, prompting people to wonder if the music was largely made in FL Studio. Concerned Ape responded, however, and revealed that all of the music was made in Propellerhead Reason. Checking the night tables of various villagers, you'll often find a note that they stashed away. For instance, in Jody's night table, you can find a note that Kent sent to Jody before he came back. And in Georgia Nevelins, you can find a note from Alex's mom. This is the Lonely Stone. There's nothing special about it, it's just a rock. However, many in the community believe that fishing near it makes you catch higher quality fish. This myth came about early in Stardew Valley's life, so we didn't really know many details about fishing back then. What people mistook as some invisible buff from this rock was actually them fishing in a deeper zone of water, which does improve your fish quality. We just didn't know it at the time. If we were to use mods to see all walkable tiles, you can see hidden paths on Ginger Island. On the west side of the island, you can also see that there's a path in the shape of a skull. There's no way to see this or walk on this path at all without mods. Here are all of the possible shapes a floor of the volcano dungeon can be. There's a couple of references here, such as a star drop shaped floor, a lightning bolt shaped floor, and a concerned ape floor. You know, I've often said that Holly has absolutely no use. Turns out, I was wrong. If you're playing on multiplayer on the Nintendo Switch only and had exhaustion on the previous day, eating a piece of holly will softlock the game. Nice. Once you hit four hearts with a character, you can click on their portrait in the gift log to see their unique animation. In Harvey's eight heart cutscene, he gives a set of coordinates, 52 north and 43.5 east. This would put his location in southwest Russia. If you're lucky, you can see a sea creature swimming at the beach. There's about a 0.06% chance for it to show up at any given second. It's possible for more than one to show up, although that's super rare. If you're not the farm owner in a multiplayer game, there's about a 1 in 111 chance that you're designated bad at music. The only things that change are that the music emote will be off key, and you can't play Elliot's piano correctly. The Statue of Endless Fortune, and by extension all of the other similar statues, are based on a Japanese beckoning cat, which are said to bring good fortune to the owner. Everyone in the valley loses a bit of friendship if they see you open the trash. That is, everyone except for Linus. There's only one point in the entire year when Linus can see you open a trash can, and it's as he's walking down to the night market on winter 15th. He'll say, find anything good? The Red Eagle painting, sold by Lupini at the night market, is in the art style of the Halpy Native American tribe. Here's some art as a reference. The painting Highway 89 probably refers to the US Highway 89, which stretches from Arizona up through Montana. It passes by both the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone National Park, both of which are known to have beautiful night skies. You may have wondered why the tropical fish number 173 has that number. Well, there's a fairly well-known painting called Butterfly Fish number 173, painted by Cuvier. Cuvier also happens to have many paintings simply titled Tropical Fish. Once you feed the trash bear three items, it'll then take off with its umbrella, just like Mary Poppins. In the pirate cave on Ginger Island, you can find two pirates with red and green bandanas bickering. The red one says, Mamma Mia, calm down, brother. Youch! This is clearly a reference to the Mario Bros. There's another reference to the brothers in some of the clothes. The classic overalls are described as being a farming classic, whereas the green overalls are a slightly less popular farming classic. Even Luigi's clothes are the second banana. In the wizard's opening cutscene, he'll introduce himself as Keeper of the Sacred Ch You get the point. This is a reference to, pardon me, Loxana 
Troy from Star Trek, who would always mention that they're the holder of the sacred chalice of Ricts during introductions. The wife's son of Troy, a daughter of the fifth house, holder of the sacred chalice of Ricts, heir to the holy rings of Betazad. The wizard actually has dialogue in all of the festivals, even though in many of them you can't reach him. During the egg hunt, he's over by Jojomart. He'll say, hmm. And what about raw lizard eggs sprinkled with blackened marrow? During the dance, he's found at the top left corner of the cliff. He'll simply say, you shouldn't be up here. During Spirit's Eve, he's actually standing right next to Linus on the cliff above the maze. He says, the affairs of mundane folk matter little to me, but the elementals like a chance to see you up close. And Linus just says, good show, old friend. During the Festival of Ice, you can find him right outside of his tower, where he says, sneaking off to visit my weird tower? You're odd for a mundane. One final out of bounds dialogue. You may notice the skeletons during Spirit's Eve have a dialogue cursor. Clipping into the cage, we can see that they say, Hi, this shirt is called the Good Grief Shirt, a reference to both Charlie Brown's shirt and his signature catchphrase. Good grief. Another shirt, the Caveman Shirt, is a Stone Age classic, referencing Fred's shirt in the Flintstones. There's only two colors of geese, the white default one and an orange one with the blue belt. I wonder what that could be. Lastly, we have the green tunic, described as a shirt fit for an adventure, as a reference to Link. This applies to the gnome's cap as well, specifically being a reference to the Minish cap, the Minish being a race very similar to gnomes. The legend has many similarities with the River King from the game Legend of the River King. The River King series was made by the same company that originally made the Harvest Moon series, Marvelous. Both fish are the hardest to catch, are caught in the mountain lake, and in its description, the legend is referred to as the king of all fish. This being said, fishing in Stardew Valley seems to be inspired by the River King series as a whole. There's several similarities, starting with the bamboo rod, a similar catching minigame, and a legendary fish in each region. When comparing the height of sprites, Shane is noticeably shorter than almost everyone else. When you're married, he'll mention that he wishes he was six inches taller. We love a short king. Investigating around Marnie's house reveals all sorts of hints of Lewis's secret relationship, such as Jas having her grandpa doll hiding under the bed, and a pair of brown suspenders being in Marnie's dresser. Even though the dwarf's gender is undefined, if you have the highest friendship with the dwarf, the fortune teller will refer to them as she. Also, if you have the highest friendship with Robin, the fortune teller will describe you sadly watching a family through the window, rubbing in our face that we can't marry Robin. If you marry Abigail, but then lose hearts with her, she could say, I wonder if I could have done better. I was very good friends with Sebastian before we met. He was probably the one. Not only confirming an in-game pairing, but also being one of the most brutal lines in the game. The pumpkin soup recipe is sent to you by Robin. It's also a loved item for Sebastian. While this isn't important in any real way, I think it's a cute detail that implies that he loves her cooking. You can catch Gil outside of the Adventurer's Guild only when he goes to the movies with Marlin. Aww. In Haley's Eight Heart event, where she takes a picture of you, any prismatic clothing you're wearing will still change colors in the pictures. The description for sunflowers says, A common misconception is that the flower always turns so it's facing the sun. Thing is, in real life, they do face the sun. At least until they reach maturity. It's actually a fairly common trait among plants called heliotropism. This description is probably just a joke about the fact that the sunflowers in Stardew Valley always face the same direction. Linus is serving up survival burgers during the Stardew Valley Fair. If you eat one, you'll still have the foraging buff from it after the event ends. While most villagers have a doctor's appointment once a year, Evelyn and George have to go once a month because they're old. Also, there's only three people that live in town that don't go to the doctor, Linus, Pierre, and Kent. Linus because he really doesn't use any modern service, Pierre cares too much about the store, and Kent could have several reasons not to go, perhaps seeing more specialized doctors. Speaking of, according to Kent's patch on his jacket, he is the rank of corporal in the army, assuming he's from the Stardew equivalent of the US. If you were traumatized by early YouTube just like me, you've noticed that the rusty spoon is a reference to salad fingers. The description says it's 10 years old. Salad Fingers came out about 10 years before Stardew Valley released. I like rusty spoons. <laughs> I like to touch them. <laughs> Jojo's logo is based off of Amazon's, with the signature smile from A to Z. Of course, they're both overbearing corporations set on driving out small businesses. 
Stardew Valley avoids making many references to areas outside of Pelican Town, but the location Castle Village comes up once in the description for earmuffs of all things. This is what the expanded mod got the location from. Similarly, there's a few references to a town named Grampleton, once in Penny's 8 Heart event, Clint invites Emily to the Grampleton Carnival in his 6 Heart event, and it's briefly mentioned in the movie It Howls in the Rain. When completing the quest to go to floor 100 of the Skull Cavern, if you used more than 10 staircases on the way down, Mr. Key will comment on you not taking the honorable way down. During the Spirits Eve festival, you'll see a house with what looks like two chicken legs. This is a reference to Baba Yaga, who's described as living in a hut that's standing on chicken legs. The Festival of Ice has two text references. First, Abigail refers to her snowman as a snowgoon, like the Calvin and Hobbes book Attack of the Deranged Mutant Killer Monster Snowgoons. Then at the end of the competition, Lewis says, that's a lot of fish, a line straight out of the 1998 Godzilla movie. That's a lot of fish. For the last 10, I'd like to talk about references to Stardew Valley from other shows or games. In Borderlands 3, there's a mission called Sourdew Valley, where you deliver eggs and milk. In the first episode of Season 3 of The Owl House, you can briefly catch a couple of game references on our laptop, including One to Hades, Hollow Knight, and of course, Stardew Valley. In Terraria, you can fish up Joja Colas. If you get this Joja Cola purified, it'll turn into a star drop. Using the star drop summons a Junimo pet. You can also buy a blue chicken egg at the Traveling Merchant, which summons a blue chicken pet. In the mobile game Kleptocats 2, which if you remember Neko Atsume, it's kind of similar to that, one of the decorations you can buy is a Junimo. In the game Monster Prom 2 Monster Camp, the narrator has a line that reads, I forgot the rest of us weren't able to make it because we got stuck in traffic coming home from delivering the purple shorts to that mayor. In the game Enter the Gungeon, a roguelike game with lots of guns, there's a gun called the Starpew. It's designed similar to a watering can and it shoots bubbles in certain patterns depending on how long you charge it up, working a lot like the upgraded watering cans in Stardew Valley. In the game Life is Strange True Colors, you can overhear two random people saying this. I have a surprise for you. Good surprise or bad surprise? I started a farm in Moondrop Ranch. Get out! I'm romancing Melody. The nurse? She's adorable! I'll be real with you right now. Game is sick. I love you. I can confirm that this is how it works in real life. In the show Nora from Queens, the third episode is titled Savage Valley. This is referring to a fake game in the show's universe, and while the gameplay is different, the title screen makes it clear that this is a reference to Stardew Valley. So those were all, like, film and game references. I had to include this last one because it's so neat. In the sci-fi novel The Salvage Crew, the main characters discover a beautiful valley while doing a salvage run on an alien planet, which they then name Stardew Valley. I would have never expected Stardew Valley to get a reference in a novel of all things. And that's all the easter eggs, some well known, some not, but all cool and interesting. Probably. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and good night. <laughs>